Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, on this Wednesday, June 17th, in our week after Pentecost and Trinity Sunday, moving into the long green season of Pentecost, it's my pleasure to share with you our reading for today from 2 Kings, which interestingly connects with some of the events going on in our country today. And there's an interesting connection as well with our morning prayer scriptures in which Jesus says, the greatest of these among you is the one who serves. And so I've entitled today's meditation, From Prophets to Grandmothers and the Rest of Us in Between. Let me tell you why I've highlighted on that set of themes or topics. Grandmothers are on my mind because of a local Atlanta organization that some of us may have heard of. They're called the Grandmothers for Peace. They're the Atlanta chapter of an international organization. You can Google it on the internet. Founded in the early 1980s and uh, featuring marches and demonstrations and political protests by grandmothers. It started during the Cold War here in Atlanta. And uh, as it happens, my own dear mother is one among them. Dr. Josephine, and my cousin Janice. And uh, this is partly on my mind because they met last week, their monthly meeting on Zoom now, but also because my own mother's birthday was last week when she turned 94. And uh, as a grandmother for peace is active uh, in that group. And uh, I'd like to just show you some pictures uh, of some of these uh, uh, local citizens of our time. Uh, Atlanta Grandmothers for Peace, you'll notice there. Uh, and that's Dr. Joe and Cousin Janice standing with the Atlanta Grandmothers for Peace and their big sign. And uh, they participated in various events that constitute a kind of prophetic witness in our time. And that has to do with today's reading from the second book of Kings, in which the prophet Elisha receives the mantle of his master, the prophet Elijah. The story goes that as Elijah knew that it was his time to leave this world, leave this life, and ascend uh, to heaven, he and his disciple went to the place of ascension and on their way crossed the river Jordan. And uh, they did so by the prophet Elijah striking the river with his mantle and the waters parting and they walked over. And uh, as they got to the other side, Elisha said, Elijah asked his disciple Elisha, what can I do for you before I depart? And Elisha said that I might, I pray that I might receive a double portion of your spirit. He knew what to ask for and he was bold enough to ask for it. He was prepared for this uh, transfer of, uh, of, of grace, of power. And so Elijah granted him that. And uh, as he was ascending in a chariot to heaven, his mantle fell and Elisha picked it up. And as he was departing to go back to his place, he also crossed the river Jordan, striking it with his mantle and uh, the waters parting. So here we have a kind of parable of what it means to take on prophetic ministry, prophetic care for justice in the world and, and uh, getting the will of God done in the world uh, as, a, as a gift, as a, um, as a vocation, as a calling passed on from earlier masters. 
Now that's what the Grandmothers for Peace have been doing in, uh, in our time and in our town. Again, an international organization with our local chapter, founded by Barbara Wheatner in, uh, in the 1980s, uh, as she was, uh, she and her other women friends were exercised over the Cold War and nuclear armament, many of them going to jail in protests. As our own Atlanta chapter went to jail in 2008, 10 grandmothers, and you can see this also on the internet, there are YouTube videos of it, 10 grandmothers and supporters ages 57 to 80 uh, arrested for trying to enlist in the United States Army at an Atlanta recruiting office on St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 2008, putting themselves uh, out there in the public in order to protest the uh, risk, the lives, the death of, of young Americans in harm's way in the Iraq war. And uh, chanting, we insist, we enlist, refusing to leave the, the recruitment center until they were arrested. So in our time, now that's been a pretty dated event, 2008. And even just eight years later, or 10 years later in 2018, my mom and Dr. Josephine and cousin Janice went to Montgomery, Alabama with, uh, with some other grannies for peace here in Atlanta to visit the Legacy Museum there uh, for the Legacy Museum of uh, Slavery and Mass Incarceration and Lynchings. And, um, and even that's somewhat dated, given the current protests in our own time after the death of Ahmaud Arbery in Brunswick, Georgia, and George Floyd in Minneapolis. We've witnessed an, a new generation of protest march, marches. And here I'd like to show you not grandmothers, but young women and older women together um, uh, observing protest in our own time. You'll see here, uh, they're lining up after the Grandmothers for Peace, they're succeeded. There's Barbara Wheatner uh, in her jail cell back in the, 19, uh, in the early 1980s as she started the Grandmothers for Peace International. And then now in our own time, uh, these women lining up uh, between the police and black protesters, lining up to protect maybe each of them from the other, we don't know, but also uh, protesting the, uh, pr providing a kind of human shield uh, on behalf of public safety and public peace, a kind of witness. Now, I have an interesting, uh, again, parable about this that connects with, uh, with, the, with a story from Second Kings. Um, last week, again, I mentioned my mother's birthday turning 94 on Friday, but just a few days before on Tuesday, as we went to vote on an election day, uh, we remembered that elders, senior citizens, get to go to the front of the line in these voting precincts. And there was a remarkable experience uh, as she arrived and uh, went to cast her vote of having a sea of bodies part uh, to make room, to make way uh, for her going uh, to do her civic duty. And it was a remarkable metaphor of this mantle of the prophet and the Elijah story uh, falling on, on successors and having, uh, having space be opened up uh, for, for, for this generation of witness and testimony. That's what I'd like to call us all to, find a way to bear prophetic witness in our time um, as you choose, uh, as your conscience and your allegiance to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ calls on you uh, to carry out. And in that way, uh, I'll give you a kind of mantra for that. In that way, I call on all of us and challenge all of us to make all lives matter by making black lives and blue lives matter. And uh, until black lives and blue lives matter, all lives will not matter. And so, uh, Let's, in that way, ourselves form a link between prophets and grandmothers with the rest of us in between. Amen. And now, prayers of the people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for all 
and authority in the nations of the world, all who govern and who have in their care and keeping the welfare and safety and prospering and flourishing of so many souls. And uh, we remember our, especially our President Donald, our Governor Brian, our Mayor Keisha, the Congress and the courts throughout the land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who lead in houses of worship throughout the world, and especially our Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, our presiding Bishop, Michael, our own Bishop Rob, priests and uh, bishops and deacons and all who serve lay leaders in our churches. And we ask that they might fulfill your will in word and sacrament. Amen, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill or suffering in any way, especially in, nurse, in nursing homes and hospitals and hospices, in healthcare environments, recovering from medical procedures, awaiting medical treatment, and especially in this time of pandemic, those who are incurring the virus and those who minister to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who have died and who will die this day, that light perpetual may shine upon them, that they may be ushered into your presence and be given the grace to intercede on our behalf as we continue in this earthly life and journey. You are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us conclude with the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.